ever heard of a piece of software that's like a, a Swiss Army knife for embedded systems? I think I know what you're getting at. We're going deep on BusyBox today. It's yeah. a collection of stripped down Unix utilities, but like all packed into one executable. Wild, right? Yeah. It's super common in embedded systems. We've got a whole stack of release notes from, let me see, version 1.23.2 to 1.35.0. Should give us a good look under the hood. Definitely. It's amazing to see how BusyBox has changed over time. Packing all of those utilities into one executable, you know, it's not just day about saving space. Which is, of course, a big deal in embedded systems. Right. But it also has a huge impact on efficiency, like how smoothly the software actually runs. Each traditional program has its own overhead, things it needs to load and execute. Disneybox streamlines that whole process. There's doing more with less. Exactly. And in resource constrained environments, you know, where every kilobyte and every CPU cycle matters. It can make or break performance. Absolutely. So where does this efficiency, this versatility really shine? What are some concrete examples? Let's say you're building, hmm, I don't know, a network router. You need a ton of tools, right? Networking utilities, file management, even something for scheduling tasks. Makes sense. With BusyBox, boom, you've got versions of ifconfig, cp, cron, all ready to go. Instead of hunting down separate utilities, it's all right there. So it simplifies development and it keeps the system lean. Exactly. That's the beauty of it. Okay. Starting to see why BusyBox is such a big deal. So let's get into these release notes, yeah. Version 1.24.0, it says here, introduced something called Enenmeter. I've got to be honest, not familiar with that one. IN Meter is a great example of how BusyBox includes these like niche but powerful tools. It's basically a system monitor, but it gives you insights that go beyond your typical CPU and memory usage. Okay, now you've got me curious. What kind of insights are we talking about? Well, like the release notes have some example output. It shows things like uh, context switches. That's basically how often the system is switching between different tasks. Uh -huh. This can really help you pinpoint potential bottlenecks, especially, again, in those resource-limited environments. So it's not just how much CPU is being used, it's how efficiently it's being used. You got it. It gives you a much more, how do I say this, granular view of performance, which is super valuable when you're squeezing every last bit of performance out of limited hardware. That's wild. It's like seeing the system's thought process, not just its heartbeat. And this is just one addition from one release. What else did 1.24.0 have in store? Another big one was event. This little utility, it actually changed how BusyBox handles hot plug events. Hot plug events. For those of us who aren't, uh, you know, embedded systems gurus, hmm. what are we talking about here? Okay, so imagine plugging in a USB drive while your computer's running. That's a hot plug event. Hmm. Event lets BusyBox detect and respond to those events, like, in real time. So it's dynamic. Very much so. It's a much more efficient approach compared to, you know, the old way, which was basically checking for hardware changes periodically. So instead of having to, like, manually check, there's a system in place to just, you know, adapt on the fly. You got it. It's ready to react. Now let's jump ahead a bit to BusyBox 1.28.0. They introduced a new applet, SetPriv, and this one is all about security. It lets you manage Linux capabilities. Capabilities. Is that where BusyBox gets its superpowers? Laughs. Not quite superpowers, but it's about having more precise control over what a process can do. See, traditional root privileges, it's all or nothing. You either have the keys to the kingdom or you don't. Yeah, but with setpriv, you can get way more granular with permissions. Like, you could allow a program to manage network settings without giving it full root access. Interesting. So it's like, instead of giving them the keys to the kingdom, you're giving them a key card for a specific room. Perfect analogy. It's a much more secure way to do things. And what's cool is that setpriv kept evolving in later releases. They kept refining how it handled those security controls, making it even more secure. They just kept making it better. Exactly. It's like they're always one step ahead. And speaking of, you know, constant improvements, for our last one today, let's look at BusyBox 1.35.0. They added the small but super clever feature to the find applet, the same file option. Find. Now that's a command I use all the time. What's so special about this to my file thing? All right, so this option helps you find hard links. Basically, these are multiple file names that all point to the same actual data on your storage. So if I have two files with different names, but they're actually just different ways to get to the same data, find can figure that out. Exactly. And it's really useful for like understanding how files are related, especially when you're dealing with 
backups or complicated directory structures. Makes sense. Plus, it helps optimize storage because you're not actually making copies of the data with hard links. It's clever. Super clever. It's really amazing how much thought goes into even the smallest features of this thing. Absolutely. And that attention to detail, that's what makes BusyBox so great. They're always looking for ways to make it more efficient, more versatile, more secure. And that's clear, even from just these few releases. From performance monitoring tools like AnyMeter to security enhancements like SetPrev, and even those clever file management tricks with Find, it's obvious that BusyBox is much more than just a simple collection of utilities. It strikes me that BusyBox was like way ahead of its time. I mean, it came out in 96, right? Yeah, 1996. Embedded systems back then were totally different. Oh, absolutely. Back then, resources were so limited. So that minimalist design of BusyBox, it was brilliant. Efficiency was everything. And what's amazing is as embedded systems got more advanced, BusyBox kept up, adding features, refining its design. Yeah, it's evolved. Exactly. And that's what makes these release notes so cool. It's like you're looking at a timeline of like the evolution of embedded systems themselves. So what other cool stuff have we found in these notes? One thing that jumps out is just how many tiny tweaks and improvements they made. Like in version 1.28.0, they optimized the Shuff applet. Shuff. What's that do? Shuffle cards? Um, it's not quite, but kind of. It's used to randomize data. Like if you need to randomize some test data or, say, generate a password. Okay. Makes sense. They basically made the algorithm behind it way more efficient, especially for, you know, large amounts of data. So instead of shuffling cards by hand, it's like they brought in one of those automatic shufflers. Exactly. And it just goes to show how much they care about making every single tool as efficient as possible, even the ones that seem kind of small. I'm also seeing a lot of security stuff in these notes. It seems like that's always been a big focus for BusyBox. Oh, for sure. I mean... As embedded systems became more connected to networks and stuff, security became absolutely critical. Like in 1.33.0, they added support for that modprobe.blacklist configuration option. Okay, uh, in English, please. Right, sorry. It's basically a way to block certain kernel modules from loading. And why is that map? Kernel modules, they can access like the core of the system, right? So if a module is, say, malicious or unstable, Blocking it adds another layer of protection. It's like having a bouncer at the door, only letting the good modules in. Exactly. And those security enhancements, they're constant. The BusyBox developers are always adapting to new threats, new vulnerabilities. It's oh, a no. never-ending process. Got to be. Okay, so we've talked about specific tools, specific features, but what about the big picture? Mm -hmm. Has the overall design philosophy of BusyBox changed much over time? You know, it's interesting. Those core ideas, efficiency and versatility, they're still there. Like they've added new things, new tools, but they've always been careful about keeping it streamlined, keeping the footprint small. It's like that do more with less philosophy, which mm -hmm. seems so important in the world of embedded systems. Absolutely. And that idea, it goes beyond just the features. Like they're always looking for ways to make the code itself better, more elegant. Instead of just adding more and more code, they're optimizing what they've got. So it's not just adding, it's refining. Exactly. And that shows real commitment, you know, yeah. to quality, to efficiency. And that makes a huge difference, especially in these resource constrained environments. So we've seen how BusyBox has changed. We've talked about all these amazing features. But what's it all mean? Why should people, even people who don't live and breathe embedded systems, care about this little piece of software? That's a great question. And I think it goes beyond just the technical stuff. Like BusyBox, it shows what open source collaboration can do. Right. It started as this small project. Right. A community of developers came together and created something truly impressive. It's an inspiration to other open source projects. And it proves that you don't need, like big corporations to build amazing, reliable software. It's like a David versus Goliath story for the software world. Exactly. And you know what else? BusyBox reminds us that simpler solutions, they can be incredibly powerful. That minimalist approach, it's allowed BusyDocs to stay relevant for like decades. All these different devices, all these different use cases. Right. It's adaptable. Exactly. It's a good lesson for all of us, you know, <laughs> not just in tech, but in life. Sometimes less is more. I like that. Okay, so as we come to the end of our deep dive into BusyBox, what's the one thing you hope our listeners take away from this conversation? It's really been quite a journey going through all these release notes. Yeah, it has. We've seen how BusyBox has you know, grown and changed, the incredible range of stuff it can do, the yeah. focus on efficiency, the security side of things. But like zooming out, 
what's the lasting impact here? Why mm -hmm. should anyone, even folks who aren't, you know, embedded systems experts, care about this software? I think BusyBox, it shows what can happen with open source collaboration. Right. This community of developers, they created something really, really impressive. I mean, it's inspired so many other open source projects. It proves that you don't need these giant companies to build high quality software, stuff that people can rely on. It's a real win for the little guy. Absolutely. And you know what else? BusyBox, it kind of reminds us that simpler is often better. How so? Well, it's design. It's minimalist, focuses on the essentials, on efficiency. And that's a big part of why it's stayed relevant for so long. You know, all these different devices, all these different ways it's being used. It's adaptable. Exactly. It can keep up, uh -huh. which is a good lesson for all of us, honestly, not just in the software world, but just in life. Sometimes less is more. Word. Okay, so wrapping up our deep dive on BusyBox, what's the one big takeaway you hope our listeners are left with? BusyBox, it's all about simplicity, efficiency, and community. Those are the big ones. It shows that even small things can have a huge impact when they're designed well and, you know, when people work together. Kung said it better myself. And to our listeners, we'll leave you with this. BusyBox is power. It comes from those simple, focused tools. So think about that in your own work, in your own projects. When does a do-it-all approach make sense, and when do you need something more specialized? Explore BusyBox's applets. Check out how people are using it in different projects. You might be surprised by what you find. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into BusyBox.